Alright, so since the last part, we've got all of our make light blocks restuffed. All these guys are ready to go and reinstalled. I also went ahead and installed the new electrolytics here and here. Uh, the first one over here is an 8 microfarad. I replaced that with a 10 because I was out of 8s. I did, however, replace the 4 microfarad with an actual 4 microfarad. The one thing I have not done yet is on this capacitor, I have not hooked up the components to the positive lead just yet, although I have added a splice, a wire splice from the negative on the new cap to the negative post on the old one and left all that wiring intact because I didn't want to move all that over. Some of the wires are a bit too short to make it over to that terminal. Uh, however, this guy over here, the positive wires were uh, more than long enough to get to the new terminals and they're enough out of the way that it uh, won't hurt anything. Now for uh, this bit, what I'm going to be doing is replacing all of the resistors. You might think, well, you don't normally need to replace all the resistors in a radio. Well, then a lot of later ones, quality is a lot better. The uh, later carbon composition resistors tend to hold up a little bit better, and I haven't had to replace nearly as many. However, with these older dog bone styles, especially in the Philco sets, uh, just about every, I think this white resistor right here is the only one that does not read out of tolerance. This is only over by one, uh, one kilo ohm. It's a 9,000 ohm resistor, and it just barely reads 10K, so that's pretty good. Everything else in here is just completely out of whack. So the first two we're actually going to do are, are tied to this post on this capacitor. We're going to reroute them to the new one. So we have this big guy right here. This is actually a 2-watt dog bone. I had to uh, check an RMA, a resistor size chart, on the forum just to double check on the power rating. Uh, it's supposed to be rated at about 16,000 ohms. However, this one reads 28,000. So that's got to go. And then, uh, oh, for reference, that is part number 11 on the chart. This is actually coming directly off of the B plus line and knocking it down for the 36 tubes. Uh, that's not the control grid, that's the accelerator grid? I forget. And then we have this guy also coming off the second uh, filter capacitor. This is resistor... Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is supposed to be resistor 19. It's a 1 mega ohm. This measures infinite on my meter. Uh, I briefly got a reading on it and then it went away. And I can read well over 20 megs, or up to 20 megs on my, my fluke, so that's toast. Now, I don't have any 2 watt parts, however, I do have 1 watt parts. And my solution to that problem was to come up with this. Uh, it's not very pretty, but these are two 33 kilo ohm 1 watt resistors tied in parallel. They measure to be about 16,400 ohms or so. That's, that's, these are one percent tolerance resistors. I think that's probably close enough for what we're doing here. Uh, however, odds are I'm probably going to have to add in some wire extensions and some heat shrink in order to get them where they need to go. I did consider using the original leads off these dog bones, but I don't want to do that. I'd rather put brand new wire in place and then cover it all up carefully. So that's what I'll do. And then for the other guy here, these are pretty typical. Uh, I'm going to replace all of these with half watts. Uh, this guy, I'm pretty sure, is a one watt component. So we'll be replacing that with a 10,000 ohm, but we'll do these two first. Okay, so here's the finalized repair. I'm not as happy as I would have liked to have been. Uh, I can't find my supply of spaghetti heat shrink tubing, so I had to make do with a close enough amount that I had in the drawer. So our one mega ohm resistor here has been cleaned up, added a bit of extension wire to make it all the way over to this terminal. We've moved the only wire going to uh, this cap, other than these two resistors, was this one here, which feeds over to this Bakelite block. So, got our new faux 16,000 ohm resistor in place, it measured about 16,400, pretty good. This guy, the one mega ohm right in there, measuring good. I'm going to leave this 9,000 ohm resistor alone. It measures around 9,500, um, but that's a little better than going up to, say, 10,000. So I think I'll just leave this one alone for now. I might go back in later and replace it with a 10K, but for now I'm happy with it. It's, it's close enough. But the next thing we're going to deal with is there are only three more resistors in here 
or well four we have this guy here this one here that one and then this one this yellow one tucked under here which will probably put over rather than wrapped around the base of this because that's just a little bit awkward so first i think we'll look at these two because these are actually a part of a voltage divider as far as i can see oh, and uh, let's see based on the schematic those should be part numbers 20 and 22 so one of them is supposed to be a 240 thousand ohm resistor and the other is supposed to be a 10k Odds are this guy right here is going to be the 10K, so let me pull out the meter and just double check real quick. These have drifted pretty good, I would imagine, as I checked all these prior while I was working on it. So yeah, that one there is measuring about 10.8, so that's not bad. We could leave that in place. Now let's take a look at the other one. This is supposed to be 240,000. Uh, yeah, that's gone up to 463, 462,000. So that's got to go. Uh, nearest standard value in this case is going to be, let's see, 220K. Oh, might have to go up to 270. 10% out of balance or out of tolerance for that would put it at about 265, which isn't too bad. If we go up a little bit with modern line voltage, that might drop the uh, B plus going to that spot by a little bit. So 270 is probably going to be the best way to go here. So I am going to go and grab some replacements. I think we'll just go ahead and if we're going to do this one, we might as well just do this just to have some... Uh, cotton, uh, just to be safe. Uh, for reference though, the 240,000 ohm resistor here is part number 22, and the 10,000 ohm resistor here is part number 20. Sorry for the surprise shift of camera here, but I needed to get better access to this side of the chassis. Anyway, I've got the 240,000 ohm resistor replaced with the 270, We've got that one 10K replaced here, and now we're going to move on to this guy hiding back here, which is, if I remember right, yeah, 490,000 ohms. This is measuring about 540, so we're going to swap that out with a, oops, we're going to swap that with a 470K, because that is the closest standard value that I have, and going too high, don't really want to do that. Next up is 560K, and that's... That's over 10% out of tolerance. I think 20% is pretty typical for these, but I'm trying to keep them as close to what they list as possible. And it shouldn't do, uh, it shouldn't hurt it really. Now there is still this resistor here. This is a 10 kilo ohm. Uh, this is actually part of one of the, 30 uh, the first 36 tubes cathode circuit. And it's got this uh, mica, or hopefully mica cap across it. This is still measuring uh, about 10,000, 10.8 K so it's it's reading pretty good I'm gonna leave it alone mostly because it's in a spot where it's really annoying to remove it because the leads are passing through the original cap and tearing that apart it's not gonna be super duper easy so I'm gonna leave it alone for now just like I did with this one but uh, this guy here is the last one on the list now the schematic does call out a 4 mega ohm resistor in the grid circuit uh, the uh, the control grid circuit of the second detector tube. Uh, I can't find that anywhere, however. I did, however, find the 50 picofarad capacitor that it lists as connecting to the grid, and it seems to be uh, inside this coil can. Um, these coil cans are riveted in place, and these coils are in there pretty good with a screw and all that, and I'm not going to dig that crap out. So we're going to see, once we replace this resistor, uh, if this thing comes to life, I'm rather curious to see now that uh, a few of these really out of whack components have been replaced and that I've, I've, I've actually ohmed out all the coils. Everything is good. There's no open circuits. So um, I'm hoping that if we use the signal generator, we should be able to get some kind of noise out of it. Hopefully. And there we go. That is the last one tacked in. So now I'm going to flip this over, get this mat cleaned off, we're going to hook the speaker back up to it in a temporary power supply, 
and we're going to see how the new filter capacitors and resistors and everything else uh, work out together. I'm not really holding my breath that it'll automatically start picking up stations, but we'll play around with the signal gen and see what we can get. Alright, so uh, I've already played with this a little bit beforehand. We've got the speaker hooked back up to the chassis. Chassis is powered up with the new electrolytics. Everything is going well. Uh, B plus is nice and stable. Nothing is uh, smoking, so you know that's great. And even better, he's focusing on um, you know public health. Get about a minute left. Well, in that stream, it helps thousands of people move from work to retirement while avoiding critical mistakes. Just visit vestry.com. See, we all feel better. Yep, it came right to life. Once everything was powered up and B-plus rose to the right spot, uh, I started receiving... Now, it's it's not anywhere near as powerful as a typical, like, an All-American 5. There's no tuned RF section. There's no proper IF section. This thing is, a, I think, as a regenerative section. This, this was meant to be a get-you-in-the-store-to-buy-a-much-better-radio radio. radio. Um, and unfortunately for Philco, or fortunately, I guess, they sold a crap load of them during the Depression when stock market tanked, and at around $15, $16, this was a lot more affordable than a typical typical set of the time. And you still got to use it with a decent antenna. The reception that I am getting right now is probably with mm, 10 feet of alligator clips strung up in my apartment, so... Yeah, with a good ground, probably better, but you're only going to pick up the high power stations. Now that selectivity does seem to be pretty decent. But of course that helps when you don't have a lot of options. The hole with and that's maximum volume right there. Although it's worth noting, like, uh, pretty much all the early TRFs, the, or, like, some t early TRFs, the volume control is purely an attenuator on the antenna input. It doesn't actually control bias or anything to the tubes. It simply dumps the antenna signal straight to ground at the lowest point. So very basic. But, um, that was honestly more than I was hoping for. Now, I haven't done all the adjustments on this set. I do not have the proper insulated screwdriver probably get to that later but for now I need to finish cleaning up the cabinet and then we can reinstall this thing because doing the alignment does not require it to be out of the cabinet so uh, that will be the next part of this little segment but I'm gonna call the uh, recapping and resistor replacement part of this video done I'll see you in the next one thank you for watching